Right, hello and welcome to Jacob's Prophecy. This is a section of the Bible. 49. Jacob summoned his sons and said, Come near and I will tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. Gather round me and listen, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my strength, and the first fruit of thy vigour, my vigour. Excelling in pride, excelling in might, turbulent as a flood, you shall not excel. Right, so I'll just pause it there. So this is Jacob's prophecy. He's on his deathbed, he, or near it, and he's got his sons around him, and he tells them how each one of them are going to be in the days to come. Now, since then, you know, however thousand years later, three thousand years, whatever, these twelve tribes of Israel have become famous and um, in my previous videos I've often scoffed a little at the fact that anyone would claim to be the if you like chosen ones of God like as if God would have any favourites amongst his her children you know all our souls all our eternal souls if you like are equal in the eyes of God so I've sort of disputed this whole idea of you know and I don't think it's very healthy either when you because what people tend to do is um, you know they want to be in that tribe and so they'll make an argument for oh yeah the Britain is the tribe of uh, Ephraim or something like that or whatever right and then they can feel like you know they are okay because they're a child of God you know but we are all children of God but recently I have come back a bit towards this idea because of the genetics and even today I was getting a new insight into how possibly um, you know what the what we have the Bible say and the way God acts in the Bible you know isn't I've always argued you know that doesn't sound like God the way it's talking and see people say it's open to interpretation I also think it's open to interpretation who Yahweh is but aside from all that and not getting into all that depth you know God is it is God's plan at the end of the day so if when God first gave us this ability this new ability that we hadn't had before in our previous lives um, this ability which would be something like you know more awareness of our awareness <laughs> more awareness of our existence and, and what we are but that it became it became a bit dangerous and you know all we wanted to do was evil in a sense you know was that bit true or some truth in it and when it says we wiped everyone off the whole world did it just mean he killed or got rid of those physical beings that was his latest update if you like his latest creation hmm Like I say, I've only just been thinking about that, so I won't go into that too much. So it's it's becoming possible to me that um, that God has been playing this part in getting this um, new ab new adaptation, new ability for people. Or maybe had to, maybe it had to be toned down a bit, you know, or whatever. But the aim has been is to get that updated to everybody over the whole world and the, and the chosen people were there you know not because you know they well if they had this gene update you know they needed to be the ones that 
survived and thrived and spread out through the whole world amongst amongst the other slightly less evolved genes perhaps that were already in the world so Jacob's got his 12 his 12 kids and obviously genetically you know they've got other brothers and stuff but these are the 12 that everybody remembers so you know why why is that if there was if there was nothing to it um just babbling a bit aren't I perhaps I have to cut this out so we've got Israel here and it's 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 been divided up for the children of Israel and um the one missing on there is Joseph because he on this map it's divided into his two sons Manasseh and Ephraim you see we've got Gad, Reuben, Judah, Simeon, uh, Benjamin there, Asher, Naphtali, Zebulun's a very small one, Issachar's a very small one, Dan is quite small so that's uh, how Israel was split up and then in in uh, 975 BC that's when the north and the south of Israel divided kingdom of Israel to the north with the ten tribes and Judah to the south with two tribes so I think that was Benjamin and Judah they're the ones that stuck together so Simeon must have gone to the north right where am I going with this sorry it has been sort of really difficult I watched this uh, really good documentary made back in uh, 1998 I'll put a link in um, and it's it's basically finding <coughs> tribes of uh, Nephtali, um, Manasseh and Ephraim possibly, uh, Issachar, uh, Gad, Reuben, but it's it's assuming that kind of the 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 ten tribes all went off eastwards uh, eventually. And I'm going to dispute some of that. And then the big question mark for me is around is around Joseph. But I think what's what's quite revealing is the um, is the prophecy of Jacob. So if we listen if we listen to the Reuben and uh, in this documentary, what they weren't very sure where where Reuben went um, but let's have a look at that verse again because I think these verses are probably the most interesting bit Reuben you are my firstborn my strength and the first fruit of my vigor excelling in pride excelling in might turbulent as a flood you shall not excel because you climbed into your father's bed then you defiled his concubine's couch. So Reuben did something wrong, and therefore he would not excel. So Reuben's kind of coming to nothing, and that's kind of played out in the sense that we, there's really not very much trace of them, although they think that Reuben would be with um, Simeon and Gad Simeon and Gad and Ephraim and I've put a question mark there because I don't think so not quite sure maybe because maybe um, Joseph 
sons and Manasseh had the much bigger portion of the land so possibly Ephraim went with these so let's have a look at <clears throat> Gad got a very short mention as well let's have a look at this Gad is raided by raiders and he raids them from the rear so not very much at all said about Gad and doesn't sound particularly good either and this these ones are suspected to be in the area of Afghanistan Central Asia sort of area now Simeon gets linked in with Levi now Levi didn't get any land because they were the priests let's just read about Simeon and Levi again Simeon and Levi are brothers their spades became weapons of violence my soul shall not enter their council my heart shall not join their company for in their anger they killed men wantonly they hamstrung oxen a curse be on their anger because it was fierce a curse on their wrath because it was ruthless I will scatter them in Jacob I will disperse them in Israel so not very good um, let's just have a look at this thing about them being brothers because we've got a picture here of the family tree so Simeon and Levi yes yeah, so they were the second and third children uh, both um, children of Leah, Le Leah so okay so that's Simeon and Levi and so not not a very good thing for them either don't seem to know what's happened to Levi and Simeon may be off there in Afghanistan so not, not much to say about them um, and obviously nothing to say about Ephraim because um, Jacob only talks to Joseph which we'll go into okay so that's that's those lot now the other one that's supposed to be over in that area um, is Naphtali so let's see what Jacob said for Naphtali this was a good one Naphtali is a spreading terebinth putting forth lovely boughs just going to search what terebinth means turpentine What's that? Uh, terebinth definition a Mediterranean tree of the cashew family yielding Cheyenne turpentine Turpentine, also called spirit of turpentine, oil of turpentine, wood turpentine, blah, 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 is a fluid obtained by the distis, distilling from live trees, mainly pines. Okay, so you you would drain the sap. Is that right? It's a spreading terebinth, putting forth lovely boughs. So it is a so it is the tree. It's not a parasite or anything like that. So that's a good one. So Neftali's been out there doing doing good, but very very short. Not much to say about that. So that was Neftali. Now who else was off in that direction? Um, Manasseh potentially, but again I'm I'm. You know, I mean, obviously it's possible that some parts of the tribe went one way and some parts of the tribe went another way. I mean, they did think in this documentary, they were wondering if anyone survived at all. But uh, here's their tribe route. So they, they kind of followed the Silk Road and um, went into China and then... And then 
back down and, and down into Malaysia potentially and stuff. And there are, you know, you'll see there are definitely some getting through, whether it's all of them or or not. But they've got and they've got these place names and everything that they are uh, ma matching up and and archaeology. But the main thing is that people have kept the traditions. They've kept the um, how they eat and and all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, so here's a uh, here's an interesting one. Let's let's have a look at uh, it's a quite a short one. Zebulun dwells by the seashore. His shore is a haven for ships, and his frontier rests on Sidon. Now, I'm not sure what Sidon is. Say the Ab Arabic, Arabic. So that's something a bit local. Maybe there's something to know about that, because obviously some of Jacob's prophecy could have been for uh, stuff that's coming soon, and some of it could be stuff coming a long way away. Now, Zebulun is quite interesting. If we look at this picture here. So when the Naphtali and the lot were going up the Silk Road, it's quite possible that when they reached a sort of, um, I don't know what they'd be, marshy or stuff down south of Pakistan coming into India, and got on some boats and land in Bombay and there's evidence that there's the Jewish community still there that have kept the traditions and they seem to have been linked with this name as well, Zebulun, and that's in that documentary too. So that is very interesting, that Bombay was a haven for ships, were you? and it's kind of bordering the Arabian Sea and stuff, so you know, these things are possibly lining up. Issachar. Issachar is another one that's gone up into... into sort of Afghanistan. So Issachar and Naphtali as well, sort of in this... Afghanistan, Uzbekistan sort of area. So let's see what's said about Issachar. Issachar, where are you there? A few more lines about him. But um, yeah, it's not very uh, uh, complimentary, or I'm not sure what is gilded ass. Gelded when they've had their balls dropped. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um. So that's not very good, is it? Issachar is a gelded ass lying down in the cattle pens. Saw that a settled home was good, and that the land was pleasant. So he bent his back to the burden and submitted to the perpetual forced labour. But so what it seems to be saying is um. Is the car not really doing his bit in spreading his uh, his seed over the world? Uh, so you know, it was his thing to do, and yeah, that's them there. Stuck. Okay, now. Oh, I'll do Ash next. Now, Ash is a very short one. Now, in this documentary, they thought that Asher would be seafaring people. And uh, they know that perhaps some of them went along the coast and stopped off in Carthage. Uh, who knows where they might have gone from there. Ash is something which resonates with me, I've got to say. Um... Maybe there are a few Britons. Never know. They could have kept going and 
got to Britain and that's a possible one next we'll go to Dan oh yeah we'll read Ash first sorry Asher Asher shall have rich food as daily fare and provide dishes fit for a king you know that actually reminds me of England provide dishes fit for a king very English hmm. Right, uh, let's do Dan. Now, Dan is known to be Ethiopia. I mean, Ethiopia has been one of the absolute concrete proofs that uh, we, you know, that, well, first of all, that Israelites can be black and and how they kept the um, traditions going, but with no um, no quibbles at all converted to Christianity. So let's see what it says about Dan. Dan, how insignificant his people, lowly as any tribe in Israel. Let Dan be a viper on the road, a horned snake on the path, who bites the horse's fetlock so that the rider tumbles backwards. For thy salvation I wait in hope, O Lord. Interesting one. Um, I mean, Ethiopia. I mean, in the past, no one could conquer them because of their mountains. And it, even the Italians tried, I think, and th oh, they did manage it in the in the Second World War around then. <coughs> but up until then, they'd been unconquered, and they still kind of held on to it pretty much I think they and and the lowly thing I mean in a sense, you know is that to do with humility you know I mean I remember growing up with the Ethiopian famines and stuff so they did seem pretty lowly then <clears throat> a viper on the road though careful with them Right, so we've got left Ben, Jude, Benjamin, Judah, and Joseph. So what was going on? Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. So we've got um, we've got this graph here. So in 975 BC, Israel splits apart, north and south. 721, the nor 10 northern tribes deported to Assyria. So that's 721 BC. And so we've seen evidence that um, Naphtali and Gad and Reuben maybe and uh, Zeb Zebulun went, went east, went east, right? kept going you know, gradually further east apparently there is uh, records that well not apparently there is records wall carvings that show that they probably stayed together in families and stuff like that but so who's left when they go is only southern Israel Judah and then 120 years later roughly Now Babylon comes in and takes Judah out. They're taken out. Um, but then, and there are a couple more deportations. But they get to come back because Babylon gets conquered by Cyrus, who. Um, likes the Jews, likes God, <laughs> and lets the Jews go back to Israel and rebuild their walls. Now it says in the history books that at this point the tribes were so sort of scattered that they just couldn't sort of hold that together anymore and, and you know they were just then they were just Israelites who mingled, didn't know where they were. 
the history likes to cover up stuff so but the ones that come back in are going to be a mix but there's going to be a good load of Judah and some of Benjamin and there's uh, records about Benjamin's numbers became really low it got down to like 600 people but Paul uh, the apostle is supposed to be a Benjamite so we do get some remaining so for the next 500 years you know there may have been a, a few who popped off but the majority of them are back in Israel if they can and up until 70 AD when the Romans come in basically just destroy everything and at that point they would have been for the next 2000 years pretty much scattered scattered about everywhere um, this is really good isn't it <laughs> really good informative video um, let's just hear let's just hear the rest of that audio in order so we've had Reuben because you climbed into your father's bed then you defiled his concubine's couch Simeon and Levi are brothers their spades became weapons of violence my soul shall not enter their council my heart shall not join their company for to their anger they killed men, wantingly they hamstrung oxen. A curse be on their anger, because it was fierce. A curse on their wrath, because it was ruthless. I will scatter them in Jacob, I will disperse them in Israel. Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Right, Judah. So Judah is going to be the main Jew that we know today that we know because they talk about all these other tribes as the ten lost tribes and Benjamin and Judah are the non lost tribes so you can't even do a search on well you can do a search on where where are the non lost tribes now but you know it's difficult wording but it's basically accepted that it's Judah and Benjamin are the ones that we know are Jews are known are Jews and have been around Europe and been kicked out of here there and everywhere got a picture here about the times in the Middle Ages you know they get kicked out of England and they obviously go to France and other places and then they a bit later on they're getting kicked out of France and then you know you can see from the picture how they get kicked out and where do they end up they sort of end up coming back round and stuff but they're well, they're scattered they are properly scattered and I do wonder if they were in these days if they stood out quite a lot more you know the fact that they seem to be so easily recognised and then obviously a few hundred years later they face another another royal going over so if we now listen to Judah let's see the hand is on the neck of your enemies your father's sons shall do you homage Judah you lion's whelp you have returned from the kill my son and crouch and stretch like a lion and like a lion who dare rouse you the scepter shall not pass from Judah nor the staff from his descendants so the scepter will not pass from Judah nor the staff from his descendants so Judah holds the he holds the um, the reins if you like but if we just carry on so long as tribute is brought to him and the obedience of the nations is his to the vine he tethers his ass, 
and to the cult of his house, to the red vine. He washes his cloak in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. Darker than wine are his eyes, his teeth whiter than milk. So that's, that's a bit weird, isn't it? So let's just go from here. So, the scepter will not pass from Judah, nor will the staff from his descendants, so long as tribute is brought to him, and the obedience of the nations is his. So it seems to be reliant on something, but they seem to be holding on to it, don't they? The sort of the official Jews seem to be holding on to their to their uh, rights in a sense. You could say their birthright. Because uh, if we, where's the family tree again? Judah is well. Judah is the fourth son of Leah, but the the fourth son of Jacob too. So he's it's Reuben first. Well, he lost his for doing that thing. Simeon and Levi. Jacob didn't have very kind things to say about them. Um, so then Judah's the next one, and he just about sort of, just about manages to hold on to it. But this bit to the vine he tethers his ass, and to the colt of his ass to the red vine. I mean that I don't understand. He washes his cloak in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. Darker than wine are his eyes, his teeth whiter than milk. Now, I think this is saying something here. I mean, this must be saying something about violence. He washes his cloak in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. You know, and Israel has does get a lot of criticism for being sort of you know, violent and stuff, you know, against their neighbours even today. And so, you know, it sort of fits in this darker than wine in his eyes, his teeth whiter than milk. This sort of saying, like, his trueness is dark, but he shows that he's perfect. And that's so true, isn't it, of Israel today, the official people claiming to be the, the ones. So, <clears throat> let's uh, carry on with this. Now, I'm going to do Benjamin now, because Benjamin is with Judah. So, let's just see what it says about Benjamin. It's quite disturbing. Benjamin is a ravening wolf. In the morning, he devours the prey. In the evening, he snatches a share of the spoil. Now, I've seen here people sort of claiming because he's a wolf, he must be from northern climates. Therefore, this is Norway and the Vikings and stuff. But I don't buy that. I don't. I don't. I don't think they. I don't think those Scandinavians have the genetics. They're L2. They're not R1B. And it's the R1B gene, which is the latest upgrade. That's the one that's spread. It's got is this found in Central Africa? It's found in Europe, and it's found in North American uh, Indians. So, and that's pretty weird. <clears throat> the latest update of, of haplogroup genetics. The, to me, this is saying that morning and night. This 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 thing is bad a ravening wolf in the morning he devours his prey in the evening he snatches a share of the spoil you know it's always take 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 this is like a proper warrior and mingled with Judah well yeah um, but I don't buy this that Benjamin is the um, the Jamaicans, you know, that doesn't that doesn't fit at all with them. Right then, let's do this big question mark here. Joseph. Now, there's evidence of maybe some of Manasseh and some of Ephraim going off east. 
let's look at this map again. The division of the promised land to the children of Israel. Manasseh gets two huge bits. Ephraim gets a small one. So this is all Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. He's got the, he's got the hugest bit. Who's got Jerusalem? Okay, so that's in Benjamin. Okay, well, anyway. So I'm losing my point. Right, Joseph. Let's read Joseph. Let's do it on this one. We'll carry on with the other Zebulun ones. Zebulun dwells by the seashore. His shore is a haven for ships, and his frontier rests on Sidon. Issachar, a gelded ass, lying down in the cattle pens, saw that a settled home was good and that the land was pleasant, so he bent his back to the burden and submitted to the perpetual forced labour. Dan, how insignificant his people, lowly as any tribe in Israel. Let Dan be a viper on the road, a horned snake on the path who bites the horse's fetlock, so that the rider tumbles backwards. For thy salvation I wait in hope, O Lord. Gad is raided by raiders, and he raids them from the rear. Asher shall have rich food as daily fare, and provide dishes fit for a king. Naphtali is a spreading terebinth, putting forth lovely boughs. Joseph is a fruitful tree. Here we go. By a spring with branches climbing over the wall. The archers savagely attacked him. Okay, let's pause it there. Joseph is a fruitful tree. You can't say better than that. By a spring with branches climbing over the wall. Now, that could mean many, many things, but it's all blooming good. The archers savagely attacked him. They shot at him and pressed him hard. But their bow was splintered by the Eternal, and the sinews of their arms were torn apart by the power of the Strong One of Jacob, by the name of the Shepherd of Israel. So this is a really good one. It's a fruitful tree by a spring. Branches climbing over the wall. He's going through over new boundaries. But he's being attacked savagely. They shot at him and pressed him hard. They did everything they could to break him. Who else could this be? Than the ones taken as slaves 400 years ago. The blacks, the Negroes. How we have tried to destroy them. But what's happened? They've made brilliant music. They've led fashion. They've led interest. The way they speak, the things they talk about. Who else could this be about? They shot at him and pressed him hard. But their bow was splintered by the Eternal, and the sinews of their arms were torn apart by the power of the Strong One of Jacob, by the name of the Shepherd of Israel, by the God of your fathers, so may he help you. By God Almighty, so may he bless you. With the blessings of heaven above, the blessings of the deep that lurks below. Look at that. By the God of your Father, so may he help you. Because they are, must be important. It's, I mean, are they, aren't they the chosen one of the twelve tribes? By God Almighty, so may he bless you. With blessings of heaven above. 
the blessings of the deep that lurks below. The blessings of breast and womb and the blessings of your father are stronger than the blessings of the everlasting pools. I mean, how many blessings? I mean, that is like just blessings from every single direction. And the bounty of the eternal hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. The bounty of the eternal hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph on the brow of the prince among his brothers. It doesn't get better than that, does it? So you'd think all these others have been noticed and Judah and Benjamin and how they've all managed to survive and play their part then then wow to this bit, wow to Joseph, when the time is right, when the time is right. The blessings of breast and womb and the blessings of your father are stronger than the blessings of the everlasting pools and the bounty of the eternal hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravening wolf. In the morning he devours the prey. In the evening he snatches a share of the spoil. These then are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father Jacob said to them when he blessed them each in turn. He gave them his last charge and said, I shall soon be gathered to my father's kin. Bury me, bury me with my forefathers in the cave on the plot of land which belonged to Ephron the Hittite. That is the cave on the plot of land at Machpelah east of Mamre in Canaan, the field which Abraham brought, bought from Ephron the Hittite for a burial place. Okay, so, um, conclusion, the 12 tribes of Israel was part of God's plan to get the genetics spread all around the world to enable them to gradually get used to this new abilities who, by the way, the first one who mastered it was Yeshua ben Joseph, wrongly called Jesus, but he revealed the name of God, our mother and father. He was God's first temple. Judah and Benjamin, and they played their part. And they were themselves and they did what they did and all the others and those of Joseph who I believe will be the they were the ones taken as slaves 400 years ago pretty much today and so it's about ready for them to return to their rightful place and perhaps Asher came to Britain perhaps but I got North American Indian blood in me anyway I'm not sure about there could have been some of the ones um, definitely when you look at the GMS Israelites where they say all the 12 tribes are I don't think that can be right I don't think that can be right the evidence in this documentary you cannot dispute it these people get into the right places and they get the right answers they were they were looking for truth and they found they found some truth. But I got question marks about the Ephraim and Manasseh. That's Joseph's 
line and I'm saying based on Jacob's prophecy that that can only be one set of people and that is as they're best known to distinguish them the Negroes of America so yeah ciao